Okay, so um, so uh, would anyone like to share what they saw and they prayed? And okay, I'll just quickly share what uh, I prayed with Nelson. Okay, so um, so Nelson. Okay, so Nelson saw this. So Nelson said that he saw something like a, a triangle on the ocean, and he kind of described it. And I tried to draw it also. It looked like a sail, okay, like a sailboat, the sail of a boat. And then he saw that the sail changed into a propeller, something like a fan. So, uh, so I, I was, I just, you know, so that was kind of very descriptive, very uh, clear detail. So something that he saw. Um, so that is what he saw for me. And for him, I saw something like a sprinkler, you know, like a sprinkler which dispenses water um, uh, to water the lawn, you know, something like that. So uh, I was reminded of, uh, so when he shared about that picture of a triangle changing into a propeller and, uh, you know, normally uh, I, I just, you know, this is what I thought that a sailboat has a particular speed. It catches the sail, catches the wind, and then it moves. And the sail has, uh, you know, gives it the ability to move. Um, so it has this particular speed and etc. But this propeller kind of a thing, a fan, uh, of course, the speed is different, and and so the uh, you know the place where it goes to is going to be quicker, etc. So that's what I I just felt, you know, maybe the God is showing, you know, that kind of a uh, thing. And for him, yeah, I just felt that, yeah, there are. People who sow, there are people who water, there are people who reap, and of course there could be people who are doing all three together, right? But the sense that maybe God is using him or wants to use him in that manner of watering, right? Bringing refreshing nurture, etc., to people. So that is that is something that I shared. So, okay, so I think um, yeah. So Joseph came and shared. Okay, this is. Uh, he shared a scripture reference, and he said, uh, "I was praying, and I just saw this verse." Or uh, he felt in his heart you know, the scripture reference, and he came and shared that uh, for me, yeah, with me. Okay. So, anyone else? Uh, um, okay. Online, I see that. Um, Sunny Moses, pray for one brother while praying. I just felt that strongly in my heart that God will make a way for him. I felt so strongly in my spirit that God will make a way. At the right time for that brother, yeah. praise God. Okay, so if um, yeah, if that person for whom you prayed is there uh, listed there, you could probably mention their name so that they can be encouraged as well. Right? Anyone else online? Did you pray for anyone in that list of participants? And then um, this is what you saw, felt. Or this is, or it could even be. Maybe you did not see anything. Maybe you do not feel anything, but you prayed in a certain way, right? If you prayed in a certain direction, uh, or for certain things for that person, you know, which you didn't plan. So that is also something that you can share. Okay. So anyone else online? Sir, can I yeah. say something? Sure. Go I ahead. I pray for Brother John online. Sorry, but, who? But um, I didn't see anything. I just prayed for the gift of prophecy for him. Okay. Okay. That's good. So that is something that we can do. Yeah, that's something to be done. Um, anyone else online? OK, uh, anybody here you want to share? What do you? OK. Uh, who's Ashok? OK. Okay, you saw a kite which was going higher up, okay, in the air. Okay. Uh -huh. So, it, okay, and what did you feel? Uh, so, this is something that you saw, right? And what did you sense in your heart about that kite? Was it him? Was it his life? What do you, what do you sense? Anything? Okay, the kite is him, okay. Yeah. OK. Right. Mm -hmm. OK. 
Okay. 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 So, uh, so he saw a kite, and then he felt. You felt that uh, the person who's holding the thread is the Lord, the twine, but then uh, the string. Uh, but that string had to be some more left, some more, right? It it could fly higher, but right now it was held at one place. Yeah. So, so so what what is it that you felt that that about that whole situation? Okay. 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 So that that he is in God's hands. So his future is in God's hands. The heights to which he might soar is in God's hands that he will take care. So it was a message, reassuring message, right? For that person. What did he, uh, when he prayed for you, did he say, share something? Okay. So he just prayed. Oh, okay. Fine. Okay. Any of the, the girls were together. So anything that you, um, Diksha, Nonsang, and what is your name? Uh, Seema. Sorry? Samita. Okay. So. Three of you, when you prayed, what is it that you? Diksha, when you prayed, whom did you pray for? Both of them? Okay, did you see anything, receive anything when you prayed for non -sang? Two references. Which was for? Okay. Mm -hmm. For answering, you shared that. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, so this scripture references that you shared. Now, how did you receive it in your heart? Okay, you were praying in tongues, and then you. Okay, it came to your mind. Okay, it's not something that you saw. Uh, it came to your mind. So the reference came to your mind. But you already knew what this verse meant, what this reference meant. Did you already know? No? Okay. Okay. So Joshua 4 and verse? Verse 5 and 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 9. Both these references, you didn't know what it meant earlier, what was written there. But then you it just you you kind of uh, got a thought about it hmm? and you shared. So um so nonsense, did did that verse mean anything to you? Uh, 1 Corinthians 13 verse 9 and she shared that when you when you read that you're trying to understand what it uh, okay okay can can we just read it uh, let me see I know it, maybe it was a personal word but um, okay so 1 Corinthians 13 verse 9 for we know in part and we prophesy in part which means that you know when we prophesy it is a part of somebody uh, it, it is it is just a part of information, part of that whole information that God gives, right? So it's not like we know everything about that person, uh, all details about that person, past, present, future. No. When we pro when we prophesy, we prophesy in part. Maybe one part of that, you know, what what God reveals is what we prophesy. So it's. It's you know it's unnatural or it's a wrong expectation to say you know when we are moving in the prophetic I should I need to know everything about that person right so it's it's not the correct biblical expectation uh, we can like persist or we can pursue God for more but we know in part and we prophesy in part so that's the meaning of thing so maybe uh, okay I'm just asking you this you know when you are like when you're praying, you know, are you saying that? Uh, did you ever feel in your heart? Oh, I don't know. I need to know more, but this is too less to actually share. Did you feel that way? Okay. If ever you felt that way, saying, "Oh, this seems like you know, very simple thing. How can I share?" You know, I I want God to move in the prophetic. I want to move in the prophetic, but then this seems like very simple. This seems like very you know, very small information. How can I share this? Then you know this is the you know this is the encouragement that it is okay. It could be just a word. It could be a very simple thing, but it's okay because it's, it comes from God, right? Okay. So Joshua four verse five. Um, 
Okay, what is Atlas? Um, yeah. Okay, it says, and Joshua said, come cross over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan, and each one of you take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of the of the tribes of the children of Israel. Is that the verse? Yeah, Joshua chapter 4. So they are crossing over, uh, across, crossing the Jordan, and then this is the instruction that, they, that Joshua gives them according to the word of the Lord. Okay, before the ark of the word, mm. according to the number, and they, what do they do with the stone? It's actually it's actually actually a memorial, right? They they keep it and they put it together, twelve stones, and it's a memorial of the Lord. I I really don't know what specific you know uh, application there is for you know Samita, but you can pray. You know, what is it that I Need to. Maybe it's about something that God has taken you over, uh, you know, in your journey, and God wants to wants you to remember that, you know, as a memorial, as a, you know, continue to come back to that. You know, the way He helped in the past. It could be that. I'm just guessing here, right? So, yeah, something on those lines. So, okay. So, anything else online? Um, right. So, so this is, you know, we talked about how th there's a parallel in the spirit, right? Just like how we naturally, we see, we hear, we touch, smell, taste, etc. Our spirit man is capable of receiving information from the Holy Spirit, okay? That is how the Holy Spirit witnesses to our spirit. You know, that is how we are led by the Holy Spirit. So we need to develop our capacity to hear from the Holy Spirit, right? And also, you know, everything we need to know that this is the ultimate authority, meaning the word of God is the ultimate authority, right? Everything is based on the word of God. So if we don't base it on the word of God, if we don't test according to the word of God, now, you know, some of these things which you shared, we tested with the word of God. Well, there's nothing morally wrong with it, right? It's all encouraging word, right? About the kite, about, you know, this two scripture references and, and the pictures. Uh, that we saw, etc. There's nothing morally wrong. There's nothing ethically wrong. There's nothing instructional in it. But you know, we we can still test it and say, okay, God, you know, is there a sense of peace when I think about this? Is there, you know, do I sense your anointing or your presence and power? You know, does this draw me closer to you? Right, all those things. Does it encourage me? Right, and um, and we can receive it. So the Bible says, do not despise prophecies. Hold on to what is good. So which means that we hold on. And um, so I made a note of, you know, what uh, Nelson shared and what uh, Joseph shared. I just made a note of it on the book itself. So I don't remember, I don't forget it. So I remember it, right? Okay. So uh, so this is how we move in the, uh, in the prophet. Okay? It's simple gift of prophecy. So, um, you know, every day, every time we, in, in our quiet time, when we sit, when we pray, Lord, what are you saying? And you get a sense of what God is saying, you know, maybe write it down. You get a sense of what scriptures are being highlighted to your heart. Make a note of it, right? Because it's God showing something to encourage, to bring, uh, to build us up, to comfort us, right? And also it could be something for the future, right? Some direction for the future. And it's good for us to learn and understand, okay, God, you are speaking like this, right? You you move in me in this manner, right? Um, like uh, maybe it is visual, maybe it's something that you feel in your heart, especially when you pray, and uh, and you you know you just keep a recollection of this, like a, you know file it away, saying, okay, God spoke to me in this manner. Now I still remember the many ways in which God spoke, and uh, you know and how it was confirmed by people. So I know that God continues to speak in that manner, right, to me. So, uh, you know, you just make a note of it, okay? Now, we're going to quickly, quickly move into two other gifts, which is word of wisdom and word of knowledge, okay? Now, if we were to classify these gifts, okay, we can say some gifts are um, like vocal gifts, like tongues, interpretation, prophecy, gifts that say something, just for the purpose of study. 
then we could say there are tongues, uh, gifts that reveal something, okay, like word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits. Okay? And then another um, classification could be power gifts, gifts that do something, like healings, miracles, gift of faith. Okay? So we looked at tongues interpretation, prophecy, gifts that say something, express right, something about the heart of God. Now these are, you know, gifts that reveal something, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and uh, we look at discerning of spirits, okay? Okay, word of wisdom. Okay, what is wisdom? Huh? Wisdom is understanding. How do we get wisdom normally? Okay, normally, you know, people, it's, the wisdom is defined this way. Wisdom is the ability to use knowledge, right? Wisdom, wisdom is a capacity or the ability to use knowledge. You know, you have information, you have knowledge, you have learning, but how do I use it? What do I use it for? Right? For example, I, uh, you know, you know that okay, um, you know, this guitar makes certain sounds, or you know, you hold the strings here, and then it out comes a chord. Or, you know, but how do I use it in a song? Right? Uh, simple example like that. Right? So. So the thing is, wisdom can come from natural means, right? Meaning, you learn, you have experience, maybe three or four years of experience, therefore you have wisdom, right? But this word of wisdom, which is a gift of the Holy Spirit, is something that we see that is supernaturally imparted, okay? Supernaturally given, supernaturally put into our hearts. That is not something that we learned, okay? Like for example, you know, somebody's an expert cook, okay? Now I can't cook. Okay, and if I need to cook, I need to have very detailed in instructions. Okay, so much you have to put. Now, a, a very experienced cook will not need to measure out. You know, the spoon, so many spoons. Just take it like that. Put, put, put. Right? If they're making something, like uh, they just do this, do this, mix it, and then taste it. Oh, wow, fantastic! Right? Now I can't do that. Now I have to measure out because I'm scared. Okay, whether it will be too much, too less. Now, the cook, because of experience, which they have, can just put it together. Okay, So that is the wisdom that comes from experience. Right? They've done it so many times, and they know. right? They have that expertise. They have that skill. Therefore, they operate in that way. But this word of wisdom is supernaturally given, or given wisdom or counsel or advice. Why is it given? To solve something, to solve a problem, to counsel somebody, right? Word of wisdom. So it is received in the same way, like how we pray and how we perceived. It is received the same way because it's the same Holy Spirit who's speaking to us, right? Now, when we look at uh, the Old Testament examples, right? Word of wisdom, we see Bezalel. Now, remember uh, Bezalel, who was given the ability to carve things, he was given the ability to design things. It was supernaturally given to him by the Holy Spirit. Right? Then we read about Joseph right, in the Pharaoh's court. Right? Joseph was given a word of wisdom. Now, he, he was given the ability to interpret the dream. Right? What was the dream that the Pharaoh had? You remember? Two dreams, same message. First dream. Crops, the corn, okay, which were actually unhealthy, but they actually consumed the corns, they were healthy. Out of the river, find seven um, cattle which are coming out, and they are very, very thin and sickly, but they actually consume or eat the cattle that are healthy. Seven again. So he, God gave him the interpretation. What is the interpretation? Seven years of famine, sorry, seven years of plenty, followed by seven years of famine, which means they're not, not going to be rain, no crops, no agriculture, nothing. Seven years. Just think about it. Fine. So he, inter he interpreted. Then he gives a very wise counsel. Right? And uh, and we see that there is wisdom that he, he, he actually, that also he has received from God and he's sharing. What does he, what does he say? In these seven years, when there's plenty, 
you build barns you build granaries you know build store houses where you can actually you know harvest store harvest store because these are seven years so you store it and when those seven years when it's not going to rain when nothing is growing you can use this right so he gives that wisdom to the king the wise counsel to the king so we see this word of wisdom which is supernaturally imparted by the holy spirit now if you if you look at joseph well joseph was just coming out of prison at that time but he was a good hard worker he was god's presence was with him and he was made in charge of everything in the prison wherever he went right but did he have experience in all these kind of things has he faced this situation before no right so he's a young man but then he gets this wisdom from god and he shares it he says this is what you must do build storehouse store the grain right so that's a supernaturally imparted wisdom okay we see in um, the new testament also you know uh, for example joseph you know joseph in the new testament um, and he is warned by the angel in a dream okay, what is that warning do not you know take the young child and go to egypt now that's a warning that's a word which comes to him and what is that word for that is to solve something that is to save his life and the life of his uh, of his child right uh, of the wife of his child I mean, the life of the child baby jesus right so he he obeys he goes to egypt and therefore the life is spared so so we see this right the word of wisdom even in the new testament as well um uh, the lord jesus when he's asked about taxes many times actually when they try to corner him there is this wisdom that comes and we know that it is from the holy spirit because he himself says that he is whatever he did he did by the power and the anointing of the holy spirit the holy spirit is upon him the anointing of the holy spirit is upon him and therefore he's you know doing all this um uh, what he did in ministry okay so it could be for several you know ways like this to counsel people to help identify what the problem is right sometimes we think okay you know this person is having problem after problem after problem and uh, you know for example if somebody has a fever okay somebody comes and says i have fever what would you suggest okay somebody says comes and says okay doctor what is your name yeah huh cyril so dr cyril you know i have, I have temperature fever so what would you do yeah what would you do you know nelson comes and says okay i have fever temperature what do you tell him what would you tell him huh go to hospital na? okay suppose <laughs> suppose you are the doctor okay. you'll, you'll prescribe some medicine okay mm. so what medicine can you give him dolo 650 <laughs> paracetamol okay to bring down the temperature right so so that is that fever is a symptom okay it's a symptom that something is wrong in his body that the dolo 650 will paracetamol will bring it down bring down the fever suppress the you know the symptom of you know the temperature and body pain and and bring it down so that he can function normally but what is the root cause why is that fever there right so if we treat that then this fever won't be there right if we treat why is the fever there you know why is that infection there in the first place right so this word of wisdom is like that what a wisdom gives us insight into why is that problem there in the first place why is that fever there right is it what is deeper what is the deeper issue what is the root cause of the problem right because it's coming from god it's coming from the holy spirit so he's passing on that word that wisdom to find out what is the root cause what is the 
you know, why is it some of these things happening, etc. And also to receive the solution or the answer to that problem. Okay. Um, when it comes to interpreting dreams, solving problems, etc., um, you know, it can it can actually word of wisdom is you know in a very practical way even in the marketplace, right? Even in the marketplace, maybe um, maybe to solve a particular situation, solve a particular problem, right? Uh, solve a challenge. Uh, maybe there's a you know maybe a HR manager and you want to recruit someone. You're interviewing someone for a job. And uh, you find that hey, everything is fine, but still there is something that you feel something is missing, right? And you want that 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 information. Something is missing. Something seems to be not right. Um, so we can always lean on God, right? And ask the Lord, Lord, what is it? You know, I want to move in the gift of word of wisdom. What is it? Lord, show me. What is that missing piece? Right. He can give us that word, give us that missing piece that can be the solution to that particular problem or th that information that we actually need. And, and you sense that something is wrong, but I don't know what it is. Right? God can give the information and say, okay, this is the reason you are feeling that way about this particular situation, about this, about this person that you're interviewing. Right, as a as a HR man, and so on. So, word of wisdom. Okay, uh, Sunny, I just see the, yeah, see all the responses. Right. So, um, how is a word of wisdom received? Okay, in the same way, it can be a quickening of scripture. It can be a knowing on the inside, like some of you said. You know, I just, I just knew that this was it. You felt that this is what it means. Right? It's a knowing on the inside of us. Okay, and. Um, you know, sometimes it's something visible. We see words, we see a, a word. So don't, let's not be caught up in, hey, it's a very simple thing. It's just a word, right? But the gift itself is called a word of wisdom. So so don't worry. You know, it's not like this whole thing with Jesus, with Joseph said, you know, it's not so, you know, wonderful like that. No problem. You know, as long as it's, you know that it's from God. No problem at all, right? It might be very, something very simple, something very small. You know, you go ahead, receive it, and share it. Be faithful to what you have received, OK? Uh, it could be also in a dream. Word of wisdom could also be received in a dream. Maybe you went to bed praying, Lord, I need to solve this. And maybe you were sleeping, and then you had a dream. Okay, I remember once. You know, uh, I was just struggling with this song list. Okay, um, the following Sunday, I had to, you know, so uh, lead a particular, and it was actually a Sunday where it was an evangelistic Sunday, where we had people invite others who were not saved and to church, and you know, it was I think, yeah, it was something what we used to call a big Sunday. We we call a big Sunday even now. So, and I, I was struggling, Lord, I, this song doesn't feel right. I need to start with some other song. So I'm just asking the Lord, Lord, what song do I start with? Which part of the song? And and um, and I and I remember just waking up the next morning, singing, you know, one part of the song, one particular song, singing a bridge of that song. Okay, um, and and I, and I just realized I wake up, wake up in the morning with this song in my heart, and I realized that yes, that was the Holy Spirit putting in my heart that question that I asked Him. He's just giving me the answer. Okay, this is what you start with. This is a song. This is the line that you start with, right? So a word of wisdom can either come in the night as a dream, or it can be something that is bubbling up in your heart, right? The way God speaks, okay? And we also see, you know, ange angelic uh, messengers to David, to Joseph, to uh, so Daniel, sorry, Daniel, Joseph, and Paul. Uh, you know, Daniel, Joseph, in the Old Testament, and Paul. Uh, we see in the New Testament that they came with this answer. To a particular problem, or maybe he was feeling fearful, but the angel of the Lord came in, you know, came in with the message, okay, you are not going to die, right? And Paul shares that, right? The Lord has told me, the angel of the Lord came, and then, you know, I'm, we are not going to capsize the ship, we will reach safely. You know, messages like that, right? So, how do we share a word? Okay, here we said, okay, pray, prophesy, pray, perceive, and prophesy. We just submit it. The same way. Okay. Now the thing is, when the word with with 
uh, word of wisdom, it is a answer to a particular problem. Okay, maybe somebody comes and says, you know, brother, sister, you know, I have this problem. Pray, pray for me. You know, and then God reveals something, and it is the it is the very root of what is happening. He or she should avoid, right? Or it should be some steps that that person person should take in order to come out of that problem. Okay, so you you know you feel very strongly saying we need to do this. You need to do this. Okay, if you do this, your problem will be solved. You feel so strongly because God has spoken. Yet at the same time, do not force it on them. Do not force it on them and say, you need to do this. You need to, you know, don't. Just say, this is what I sense God is showing that this, if you do this, there will be, uh, you know, uh, uh, you'll come out of this. But you pray again, you submit it and say, this is what I sense God is speaking. And then don't force it. Let them think about it. Let them do it. You know, again, you know, if you take that example of Joseph giving that wisdom to the Pharaoh, now it also means that along with that solution, okay, there needs to be physical effort, there needs to be diligence, there needs to be perseverance. Okay, why do we say that? See, he gave the he gave the solution. Okay, this is what you need to do: build storehouses. But then they had to physically build the storehouse. Right? They had to build that storehouse. They had to make sure it was big. They had to make sure that it will, you know, it it, it will protect them from maybe you know all kinds of weather. They, that it would protect the grains from maybe rats and insects and so on. They had to do that, right? In the natural, they had to do that. They had to build it in a certain way. They had to make sure that the grains can be protected. They had to do it. Right, so when there's a solution to a problem, okay, maybe some financial difficulty, and then God says, okay, this is what it is. I will take you out of that problem, but this is what you need to do. In the natural, there are certain things that that person has to do. You know, not overspend. You know, make sure that there is no wastage, unnecessary wastage, unnecessary expense. All these things. Learn about how to maybe you know save for the future, etc. All these things. May not be there in that word, you know that word wisdom which came. But then they have to physically persevere, be diligent, and put in effort in order to come out or experience that word of wisdom. Right. So we need to understand that. Okay. So no pressure. Don't convince others, uh, etc. So this is how a word of wisdom works. So word of wisdom could be something about the present. It could be something about the future. This is what it is. This is what is most often it is that way. You know, something about the present to solve something, some other, something about the future, maybe to warn or to solve, etc. Word of wisdom, right? Okay. Any questions on this? Word of wisdom. Okay. What we'll do is we'll we we'll look at word of knowledge also. Okay. So word of knowledge is most most often again. And information, it's a word, right? It could be detailed information, right? But it could be about the present uh, or it could be about the past. What, what is in the past or it could be about the present situation, right? Word of knowledge. Um, we, we see that uh, it's divine knowledge. Divine knowledge. Um, it's not something that you read up. It's not something that you, you know, you had a cause or something, but it's divine knowledge. Holy Spirit drops it into your heart. This information, this piece of information, right? It could be information about a person's past. It could be something that the person is going through, right? God, God puts it in your heart, and then you share that, and and it's for a pur purpose. Why? Because that person needs to be encouraged. That person needs to know that God loves them. God cares for them, that God understands what they're going through, that God is watching. All these things happen when you know somebody gives a word of knowledge. You know, normally we club it all under prophecy, like a prophetic word. But you know, for the purpose of study, we see that you know this is a particular gift, word of 
knowledge. It could be, again, just a small piece of information. Okay, So let's look at, um, OK, so it could be about what is causing the problem in the present. It could be about uh, you know what the person needs to do, et cetera. So it's a small piece of information. You know, in the in the Old Testament, we see King Saul. Okay, uh, even before he became king, he was looking after the donkeys, and he lost his donkeys. Now that's what Scripture says that he went about searching for his donkeys for you know two or three days. Then he comes to meet Prophet Samuel. Okay, so Prophet Samuel he's talking to Saul, and then he says, you know, this is what will happen to you. Um, you know, you will meet these prophets who are coming, you will join with them, and you will prophesy, etc. And he says, by the way, the donkeys that you are searching for, they have been found. Donkeys that you have been searching for have been found. Now, now this is before the days of email and you know WhatsApp and everything. How did Samuel know? Because God revealed to him. It was an information about Saul, King Saul's donkeys, possessions that he had lost, right? So Samuel says, that that you lost, those donkeys, they have been found, right? You see, like that, several instances in the Old Testament, uh, like the prophet Elisha and Gehazi. Gehazi, you know, goes after Naaman and he says, you know, you give, my master said, he lies to them, right? He says, you some gold, some silver, some land, all that, he says. And um, he lies to Elisha. He says, no, I didn't do that. But then Elisha says, you know, you went after this, you did. So that was information revealed to Elisha about Yahasi, right? Okay. So we see that in the Old Testament, uh, several examples like that. In the New Testament, also we see, and, um, you know, John chapter 4, we see that Lord Jesus, um, you know, several examples given there, you can go through. But we see the Lord Jesus is having this conversation with the Samaritan woman at the well, right? John chapter 4. And then about the water, and he says, you know, I can give you living water, and those who drink of that will never thirst again, etc. And then he he says, go call your husband. Okay, so she says, you know, no, I don't have a husband. And then he reveals something about her past. Now he's meeting her for the first time. And by the Holy Spirit, he gives that word of knowledge about her past. What is that? That yes, she has been married before. And the, and the person with whom she was living was not her husband. Right. So he reveals that. And then we also see what that resulted in. What did that result in? It resulted in that person, that woman, her eyes being open. Could this be the Messiah? He, she goes and you know tells the entire village, you know, come and meet a man who told me everything about my life. No, but the fact is, Jesus just told her. This information, right? She went and she called them, and and the way in which this word of knowledge was communicated or shared, it was not in a shameful manner, right? It is an information, sensitive information about this person's past, right? It's not something that she she would she was proud of, but the Lord revealed that in a very gracious manner, and her heart was changed, her heart was restored, right? And she went and, uh, and she was like an evangelist calling the entire village to come and meet with Jesus, right? So it also talks about how the message should be communicated. So it lets people, um, when, when the word of knowledge is shared, people understand, they know that, okay, God knows my past, God loves me, God cares for me. Right? Because it could be information that no one else knows, right? But but God reveals that. And I, I remember once I was uh, traveling in a metro, and then uh, there was this this person who came and sat next to me, right? Um, this lady, and then so, so I was just praying and asking God, God, you know, sh give me some word so that I can share some word. What is it that I need to share? So, um, so I saw this I saw this dog, okay, a dog with. A golden color hair or something, you know, 
and then so I thought it was a it was a you know a, a breed of dogs called poodle. So so I asked her, you know, did you ever have a poodle in your life? You know, a dog. So she said no. Then uh, then I, I I told her, you know, the, the reason I'm sharing this is because I was as when you walked in, I said, God, give me a word. And so I saw this golden haired dog. I thought it was a poodle. Probably I'm mistaken. She said, "No, I had a golden-haired dog, you know, uh, and it's a it's a different breed. It's called a golden retriever. Right? I had a golden-haired dog, and as she was telling me this, I could sense the Lord saying that He knows her, that He wants her to come back to Him. Okay, so I just shared that, saying, "Okay, see, I didn't know that you had a golden-haired dog, but God knows, Jesus knows, and He knows about your past, and He wants you to come back to Him." So then she said, yeah, I used to go to church. I used to be, you know, part of a church, but then something happened and now I've, you know, I've moved out. It's been, I, I'm far away from God. So I just said, you know, God knows you. God cares for you. God knows you. God wants you to come back. Right? And so she was very encouraged. She said, you know, she was like, her whole expression changed. She was, she was like, wow, you know, um, I'm so, thank you for sharing that. Thank you for telling me that. So that is what a word of knowledge can do for a person who receives it. They understand that, hey, God knows me. And through this absolute stranger, God is reaching out, saying that, you know, he, he knows my past. He knew me. He was there, right there when I was hurt and moved out of church and moved away from him. And he's still waiting for me to come back. So, so she was really touched. And she said, you know, thank you for sharing that. It's a word of knowledge can do that. So, um, how is a word of knowledge received the same way? We either see, we either receive a word, we either receive, you know, a sentence, complete information, right? Um, like for example, Peter, Peter received, right, that information. There are three men who are coming, go with them, right? Three men, information, um, you know, very detailed, even for Cornelius, you send, you know, he was praying, said, go, send. There's this Peter, Simon Peter, who's dwelling in this, uh, in this house. Uh, the house address also by the sea. It's in, it's in the house of this tanner. So you send him, send people, and he will tell me. He will tell you. He'll speak to you the words of this life. Right? So, so Cornelius obeys that. So he receives this very distinct, detailed information about Peter, where he's living, and what he's supposed to do, etc. Right? So, um, so it could be a picture, it could be inner impression, um, it could even be a scenario from scripture. Right? For example, it could be uh, maybe God, uh, you know, multiplying the bread, and you know, so that means that, okay, he's, he will take care of my provision. You know, he'll provide for my needs. So it could be something from scripture, you know, some something that we've already seen uh, or, or, or what we have read, right? It could even be physical sensations. Like, for example, it could be a physical sensation in your body that you're experiencing that God is communicating something, you know, maybe, maybe like a sensation of, you know, some, some pain, uh, maybe in your elbow, and then God is wanting to, tell you that there is someone with that kind of symptom that he wants to touch you know why why does he why why does he want to reveal that information you know maybe about that person's past or some condition in their body because he wants to do something right he wants to heal he wants to change that is why it's not to say that okay god knows everything god knows everything but he also wants to do something in their life right okay so um it could come in the form of dreams and visions like we saw earlier uh it could be angelic visitation for example you know acts chapter 8 philip right philip is in samaria and there's a revival okay you you remember that right philip goes to samaria preaches the gospel everybody's coming to know the lord there is there is revival and he receives a word. 
it's a word of knowledge it's an instruction and it's an angel who appears to him and the angel of the lord speaks to him saying philip go to the south to that land to that place from jerusalem to gaza this is desert go there so he obeys right so it could be an angelic visitation also um, and it could be inspired writing maybe or maybe you, you want to wish someone on their birthday and you're texting someone right um, happy birthday and you're thinking god you know what should i tell this person what encouraging thing about uh, you know you never planned it but then you find yourself writing okay some some verse from scripture or something so it could be inspired writing as well okay so in all these ways we can uh, receive the word of knowledge so word of wisdom it could be about the past or future to solve a problem word of knowledge it could be about the present it could be about the past uh, it it is it is to show that god cares it is again you know to bring change in that person's life right it could be an instruction so how should we share it you know it's information about someone be loving be gentle be compassionate right um don't scare them right? don't intimidate no, these are practical things be clear be specific you know some of these things could be symbolic but just share what you saw like if you if you don't know the meaning of it it's fine right i don't know the meaning what it means but this is what i saw so you just share that so what happens is the person who hears it you know sometimes god puts it in their heart they know exactly what it means right so all you need to do is be faithful in sharing and you say you know i don't know what it means yet but i'm just sharing what i saw so sometimes that person will understand they hear it and say yeah i exactly know what you mean right what 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 you're sharing i know the meaning of it right so so don't worry to share or you could just ask the lord lord i i'm seeing this but i want to know what it means what is the meaning of it god so i'm seeing this thing this picture what does it symbolize what is the meaning of it and the lord will speak and give confirmation okay um again will we make mistakes possible right maybe you know maybe out of our own desire for person for the person to be healed or for the person to be you know we saw the person's problems could be solved you know we could make mistakes right um and but that is why we are saying you know you test or you are also testing validating you could make mistakes but that doesn't stop us from pursuing spiritual gifts that should not stop us right we learn from the mistakes we don't go back and repeat the same mistakes being presumptuous or you know uh, we begin to move closer and closer to the lord and say god i want to be used by you so pursue love desire spiritual gifts okay uh, when we come back we'll take a break now when we come back we'll look at discerning of spirits and then the other three gifts as well right okay we'll stop here